uh, we have uh, Isabel Figueroa Ferretti. She's from Madrid, Spain, and she works in the finance department at ICADE, Universidad Pontificia Comillas, focused in financial economics. Um, she did her, her PhD in London, and now she leads a quantitative finance research group at ICADE. Welcome, Isabel. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for the nice presentation and thank you very much for, for inviting me to this exciting workshop. Um, I thank you, Mauricio and Carlos Escudero. Um, I feel very honored to have the opportunity to talk about this paper, credit risk and um, mild explosivity of credit default swaps in the corporate energy sector, which I have written with uh, Ignacio Cervera, uh, who is also a professor in ICADE. So actually this paper connects to the, to the previous talk of Tomo Yoki um, in the sense that it addresses credit risk, but from a different perspective, uh, it, because it's an, an empirical paper, okay, that is gonna analyze this credit risk through a different uh, periods of uh, abnormal market conditions. And um, it's concentrated on, in the energy sector. So um, the idea is that um, it, comp companies in the energy sector started, oh, I haven't, yes. So basically the, the, the motivation for writing this paper arises because uh, throughout the 2013, 2015 period, um, I realized that uh, energy, co uh, energy corporates were defaulting on 100 billions worth of debt. And uh, I was interested in, in uh, actually uh, analyzing this aspect because uh, at the time I was uh, doing a paper uh, on crude oil prices uh, or mild explosivity of crude oil prices, which uh, I co-authored with uh, Yanis Paraskalopoulos and Rod McCrory. And in this paper, we actually data stamp um, uh, two periods of uh, of uh, in, departures from the standard martingale behavior in crude oil prices. Uh, one was uh, during the global financial crisis where we, we show that there is a positive uh, episode of mild explosivity or bubble-like behavior. And another episode in 2014 where we did data stamp uh, a, a negative bubble uh, in crude oil prices. So I thought that it was interesting to analyze this fact uh, in greater detail and add a new dimension of, uh, uh, to, to credit risk that uh, had not been uh, explained uh, in, in the literature. So uh, basically in this paper, we analyze the determinants of credit risk in terms of uh, uh, the debt uh, collateral of an energy corporates, which is the crude oil price, but we also look at other financial variables because actually um, uh, the uh, fact that in the, uh, in the spring of 2013, the Fed announced the start of the tapering process uh, was also an important factor that uh, determined the, the, the later episode in seeing in credit risk in energy corporates. So we're going to use uh, credit default uh, swap spreads as a measure of credit risk. Uh, basically, credit, uh, CDSs are, uh, are financial derivatives that allowed the buyer to protect uh, uh, himself against a credit event, okay? So um, a credit spreads are a very good measure of credit risk because they, every time the probability of default increases uh, a, a given uh, CDS of our uh, uh, energy corporate will exhibit higher spreads. So we see that in 2000, uh, in, in, in between 2014 and 2016, energy corporates were exhibiting uh, levels in the CDS spreads that were as high as those seen uh, all over the global financial crisis. 
Now, uh, because I, 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 this talk, uh, this conference was, uh, was initially planned for March and then it was delayed for June, I thought that uh, it was interesting to, to, to shed some light uh, in this presentation to the effect of the COVID pandemic in crude oil prices and, and credit risk in energy corporates. So I'm going to also give some, some, some guidelines, um, some preliminary results in that respect. So uh, before I proceed, I have to, it's important to, to, to underline uh, in this literature what I mean by bubble behavior. Um, I will uh, detect or determine whether there is bubble behavior by using the, the methodology introduced by Phillips, Xi and Yu 2015, uh, which basically allows to test for departures from Martingale, temporary departures from Martingale behavior. And, um, but this is a statistical uh, test, okay? So the idea that uh, when, when, when you, when applying this test, uh, we are able to, uh, if we are able to, to reject the null hypothesis of uh, Martingale behavior, and we are, so we accept that there is a mildly explosive behavior, um, that, that is a statistical concept that doesn't necessarily imply that there is speculation or bubble as such. In order to establish whether there is a speculation, uh, you need to analyze the fundamental, okay? So the idea is that once one establishes that there is uh, a mild explosivity, if uh, that mild explosivity episode is also seen in the fundamental, then we can establish that there is bubble behavior, okay? So I will talk about mild explosivity rather than bubble because for in, in, under this literature, if we talk about bubbles, we are effectively stating that the fundamental uh, is also exhibiting mild explosivity. So for example, in an earlier application, Phillips himself tested uh, whether there was mild explosivity in the NASDAQ index during the dot-com crisis. And he demonstrated that there was uh, actually bubble behavior because he used the index, he tested for, for mild explosivity in the NASDAQ index, and then he used the dividend as a, as a fundamental, and he actually showed that the dividend was uh, exhibiting mild explosivity over exactly the same period, okay? Right, so basically we, we, in this paper, we, we, we see that there are two uh, main episodes of mild explosivity seen in credits, credit risk in the energy sector, credit risk measured by the CDS spreads. So there's one main episode over the uh, global financial crisis. Um, and a second episode uh, after the, cru the crude oil price collapse seen in 2014. Then there is a, 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 a sort of less important episode during the, the, the European sovereign uh, debt crisis. So um, it is interesting because uh, in, our, in our previous paper, uh, where we look at, uh, at, at the time series properties of crude oil prices, we actually um, see um, that, uh, sorry, um, we actually see that there are two, the, 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 the period of mild explosivity seen during the global financial crisis uh, was due to the demand side fundamentals, why uh, the, 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 the negative uh, uh, episode of, of mild explosivity seen in crude oil prices in 2014 was supply related. It is interesting that whether the shock uh, for crude oil is uh, in, in demand, in the demand side or in the supply side, this, it actually is uh, reflected in credit risk in the energy uh, corporates. So uh, we actually, um, uh, highlight this point that uh, that uh, that uh, the literature up to this point had acknowledged or stated that the 2014 uh, uh, episode uh, of mild exclusivity seen in crude oil prices was due to supply conditions. But we are going to add this new dimension 
And we're gonna show that this was also linked to the underlying financial distress in the energy sector. Okay, so we will also show that uh, the, the decision to the announcement, the tapering announcement in, 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 a, in April 2013 may have been related or, 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 or in haste this deterioration of the balance sheet in energy corporates. Um, so the, the, the strategy that we follow is, the, is to test for mild explosivity f uh, using the Philips GNU methodology um, uh, um, for NCDS uh, energy corporates. And then we're going to look at the fundamentals. So the fundamentals will be the obvious and tangible fundamental, which is the crude oil price. But then we're going to use also the 10-year uh, US uh, treasury real rates and other financial fundamentals, uh, such as the corporate debt EBITDA ratios. Now, this figure is quite interesting. Um, uh, it shows how, um, so basically what we have here, this, uh, this axis uh, denotes the prices in dollars of, the price in dollars of the crude oil. So we have the, the, the dark care line is the Brent spot and the, the, the blue uh, like line is the is, is a WTI. And um, so and these are the real, the real 10 year real uh, US treasury rates, okay? So we see that uh, the crude oil price uh, went uh, uh, throughout the, uh, the first decade of the new century, uh, increased uh, uh, dra in dramatically due, due to uh, a number of reasons, but mainly the, the, the increased demand from emerging uh, economies. And also that was combined by the introduction of uh, fa new financial products that allowed to take ex investors exposures to commodity, uh, to, to commodity indexes um, that at the time were recognized as a, as, a, as a new asset class. So the combination of those factors made the price to rise from say uh, $50, $50 per barrel to $140 per barrel in a, in a very short period of time, in a year or so. Then uh, the, the price, even more interesting is the fact that the price within a two week period collapsed from $140 a barrel to uh, $40 per barrel, okay? So then, that this is this episode is July, is in July uh, two thousand and eight, and this is just uh, before the Lehman's episode. So at the time, the real yields were in uh, at the at, at the lowest level within the decade, and um, but then they peaked, and then after the introduction of quantitative easing policies, the the the, the real yield uh, uh, collapsed. Here we have the the. Uh, the axis, the, measure, the metrics for the real yields. Okay, so here we see uh, we see crude oil price recovery. Okay, so enjoying uh, energy corporates were enjoying the times of quantitative easing and the the cheap money and the 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 the, the fact that they could be, uh, that investments uh, could be done at a relatively low cost. But then we have the tapering, the tapering announcement in the spring of, uh, of uh, 2013. And so that makes, um, that makes the real deal to, to, to increase dramatically. Why it's important? Why have I, have I chosen this, this metric? Well, because it is important to, 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 to consider whether the increase in the yields uh, is done on, on, in a context of, of low inflation. Okay, if, if, if increase in the yields, um, if, if there is an increase in the yields, but the inflation is high, you wouldn't have such a, a, a big uh, a regime shift in, in, in the real yields. But uh, because inflation was still low, uh, we see this effect, okay? So we will see that this, this, this shift may have affected the collapse in the crude oil price. Um, especially because uh, I will show later that the debt in energy corporates increased dramatically over the quantity easing period. Now we have this collapse in crude oil prices in uh, November uh, uh, 2014, and that is 
highly related to the fact that um, that uh, the OPEC decided not to uh, restrict output and defend uh, crude oil, crude oil uh, prices. So that was not expected by the market and caused this collapse. Uh, um, there was an excess supply in the market due to the shell revolution, so prices kept uh, on low demand, so prices kept, kept uh, uh, decreasing. And then they recovered, and this last, uh, this last uh, drop was the, the, the collapse in crude oil, represents the collapse in crude oil prices due to the COVID pandemic. Okay, as you know, the, 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 the collapse in uh, the, 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 the pandemic has uh, led to a collapse in the global energy demand, and that uh, pushed is uh, prices to the minimum levels ever seen. In fact, WTI spot prices in the week of uh, uh, April the 24th uh, reached uh, negative levels that are not reflected here because uh, this is the average, this is weekly data, so it's the average of the week, okay? So what's, so that's, uh, uh, now I'm gonna, sh I'm showing you the time series evolution of uh, CDSs of energy corporates, okay? So we can see uh, that there is, a, a, that, a, that the CDS prices a, a have a, a exhibit sharp increases and collapses during the global financial crisis. And also some, uh, uh, some energy corporates uh, have exhibit also as a re regime changes during the European sovereign debt crisis, but it is remarkable how the 2014, 2016 uh, collapse in crude oil uh, has an important effect on uh, 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 the CDSs of individual energy corporates. Um, these are, uh, I'm, I'm also going to talk about uh, uh, the, the the value uh, of uh, CDS sectorial energy indexes, which are more liquid than individual CDSs, okay? And so they represent the value of a portfolio of CDSs in, in the energy sector by area. So we have the European benchmark, which is the red line. We have the American uh, benchmark, which is the, 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 the light blue. And we have the Asian ex -Japan, uh, Japan benchmark. So unfortunately, we don't have data uh, for these uh, indexes uh, uh, prior to that cover the global, global financial crisis, but we can see that there is a big spike or regime change in 2014, 2016, and this other spike represents uh, the, the, the effects of the COVID crisis, okay? So, um, Basically, now I'm going to just uh, tell you briefly ab about the, the before I, I, I show you, I talk about the methodology and results of this work. Let me just tell you that uh, some literature that has dealt with the, the, the 2014 uh, crude oil price collapse. Uh, Killian is the classic reference. Uh, he, he, he explains that collapse in terms of uh, supply and demand fund is a uh, supply and demand side fundamentals. Fantacini uh, shows that there is mild explosivity during 2014 and in, in our energy in the paper that is now published in energy economics we show that there are two episodes of uh, mild explosivity in crude oil prices but we show that um, they are the, both the, 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 the 2008 and the 2014 are different in nature in the sense that uh, uh, the, 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 the global financial crisis episode of mild explosivity is, re is related to the demand side and we are able to associate that, that, that change uh, or that, that uh, period of mild explosivity with uh, uh, a, a period of mild explosivity, earlier period of mild explosivity of, of a leading indicator with it, which is the Baltic Dry Index which tells us uh, basically reflects where, what is the cost of transporting commodities in the ocean? And then uh, the, the 2014 uh, price collapse uh, is related to supply side fundamentals, as I already discussed. 
Here uh, we have so papers that um, relate limited literature that relates uh, crude oil prices with credit risk. Uh, the, the best effort has been uh, put by Domansky et al. Uh, that they argue that they, they, they actually analyzed the 2014 crude oil price collapse and they show how lower prices for crude oil uh, reduce uh, expected cash flows for energy corporates and that increases a uh, uh, default risk because at the same time, due to the fact that crude oil is a collateral uh, of the debt of energy corporates, uh, a, de a decrease uh, in, in the crude oil price uh, decreases, uh, uh, worsens the financial conditions. Kang et al. 2014 explored efforts, uh, the effect of, uh, of like crude oil prices on, on US bond index returns. And then this is just a literature, Frank and Goyal uh, basically highlight the fact that uh, um, uh, the leverage ratios tend to be higher for those sectors uh, for which the debt collateral is actually tangible. And that is an example for the energy sector, okay? Uh, the crude oil is easily tangible, so uh, because, uh, this, because we can measure its value, um, uh, companies tend to, to, to expose themselves to a greater, uh, to greater risk or greater levels of uh, debt. And then Bernanke, and uh, this, this paper is also related to the work of Bernanke and, and Gertler, who actually high, highlight uh, the credit channel theory, uh, stating that monetary tightening, the effect of monetary tightening, uh, such as the start of the tapering process on the cost of borrowing and subsequent real activity, uh, are magnified uh, through a deterioration of the balance sheet. So we, um, we also shed light, light to this effect. In terms of the literature that has up, uh, applied the, P, the PSY methodology, well, we have PSY, we have PSY uh, 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 applied their methodology to the Standard and um, Pulse 500 index. We have Pavilis et al. applied the methodology to the uh, housing uh, market and ma other macro variables, and then we have 18. Irwin and Garcia have applied to uh, ACTS. And then we have, uh, uh, I have applied with uh, Rod McCrory, uh, the test uh, to non-first metals and precious metals, always linking uh, testing for the fundamentals. We never found any, any evidence of, uh, of bubble behavior. We, always, we were always able to kind of Justify episodes that have seen in non-first have uh, have been seen in that we detected in non-first metals during before the global financial crisis were associated with tight uh, demand conditions or tight fundamentals and similar results are obtained for the precious metals markets and then we have some literature uh, important literature that has used the methodology for uh, for the crude oil. Now, in terms of a methodology that is, is used, so we use the PSY methodology, which is a statistically rigorous procedure that allows us to test for temporary regime shifts of exuberance and collapse. And that's, that are embedded in a time series that is evolving as a stochastic trend. So the idea is that uh, the main, the, the, the technology is going to be based on a recursive regression because the idea is that uh, if one does the test for a whole sample, if you have a bubble in the middle of the sample, uh, you might not be able to detect. So it is very important that the, the, the actual test is recursive. So basically, uh, the uh, it, 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 we estimate, uh, we are interested in estimating this, this, this coefficient, the autoregressive uh, coefficient, and um, for a number of uh, samples that are between R1 and R2, 
Um, under the alternative uh, hypothesis, uh, the, the time series uh, first uh, exhibits a unit root and then during a period, during the bubble period, exhibits a mild, mild, mild explosivity. And then it's a, after the, the period of mild explosivity, it returns to a new equilibrium. So um, the, in order to perform the test, we are gonna use two statistics. One is the backward recursive a, 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 SDF statistic. It's important to highlight here that the test is based on the right side of the dicke full distribution because we, the null is, the null hypothesis is that the autoregressive coefficient is equal to one and the alternative is that the autoregressive coefficient is higher than one. So actually what we're performing is a dicke fuller test but we're looking into the um, uh, 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 right side of the distribution. So we first uh, generate the general, we, we do, uh, we calculate for every difference, uh, we have to use different starting samples, okay? And um, from every uh, sample that we use, initial sample, we are cal gonna calculate the supreme ADF statistic, and then the generalized S supreme ADF statistic will tell us which, what is the supremum of the supremum. So the generalized SDF statistic tells us whether uh, there is general bubble behavior and if we uh, uh, fail to project that there is, uh, if we accept that there is, uh, if we find that there is a, a general bubble behavior, then we proceed to use the backward recursive statistic in order to date stamp the bubble. Right, so, um, the import, it's also important to know that uh, uh, the test is recursive. So the idea is that if we find that the coefficient, that the regressive coefficient is significantly different than one for a consecutive number of periods that is higher than the minimum bubble condition, which is the log of t, where t is the sample size, then we actually declare that there is a bubble. So, uh, we use, in order to do the test, we use weekly data because uh, it is, uh, uh, we have uh, verified that is the best frequency, uh, uh, the appropriate frequency to use in order to apply this test. And so we have a five, we use five years CDS spread data, okay. We are gonna, for 11 energy corporates, we are gonna have three uh, CDS indexes, energy sectorial indexes. We also are gonna do the test to the 10 year US bond real date. These data are all from, from Bloomberg, but then we're gonna use fundamental leverage ratios uh, that are not, unfortunately, are not available on a weekly basis, but on an annual basis. And these are going to be obtained by Faxet. And then, uh, well, the data on crude oil, uh, uh, spots, uh, Brent, and WTI prices, I get it from the Energy Information Administration um, because this is available to everybody. And I think it's nice for, for researchers to be able to test the results with publicly available prices. So uh, the, the, the initial sample is determined by this initial condition, okay? So basically, um, if we have 876 observations, that, well, that would be more or less uh, the, number of the average number of observations if we run the test from say 2003 to 2018, uh, that would give us a, a, a are an, a, a minimum bubble condition that is equal to seven weeks. So in order to detect a bubble, you need the, to, to, to find a, 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 that the alternative is true uh, of explosive uh, processes uh, uh, or, 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 or temporary regime shifts is true for more than seven consecutive weeks. And the initial sample is uh, uh, 53 weeks, under, if these are the number of observations. So how do we choose the, uh, in, in the, the, the different energy curves? 
Well, we, at the time that we started this research, we basically ranked all the cor uh, corporates uh, by, uh, by market cap and selected all of those for which we found liquid CDAs data for the five-year maturity, which is the most liquid maturity. We sort of way uh, we uh, we deal with this range, but finally report uh, results only for the those for which we have a liquid uh, um, liquid uh, CDS. That is a continuous series. So it is important that in order to perform the test, you need to simulate these critical values under the null hypothesis, okay? And those critical values change depending on what is the sample, the size of the sample. So basically here you have details of this, the, the, we have to condition the, the sample use to, to availability and also to the, to, to, to the fact that, um, that the, the, the the, the critical values differ for different sample sizes. Just to note that here, uh, I haven't been able to update uh, all this whole series to take into account the COVID crisis, but I did update uh, these three uh, energy CDS indexes. So we, is, we don't stop in April 2019, we stop in June 2020, okay? And the same for crude oil, Brent, and uh, WTI prices. So we, the, the PSY test is performing three stages, okay? First, we test the null hypothesis that there are no mild displacive uh, explosive periods against the alternative that there is at least one of such periods. Then if we reject the null, okay, we data stamp the mild explosive, uh, explosive periods. And then once we know uh, the periods in which there is mild explosivity, uh, we test whether the fundamental, we find a fundamental and we test whether uh, the fundamental exhibits mild explosivity over the same periods. Okay, so this is a, a graph that, that, the, the, that exhibits the results of running the test, okay? So, for example, here I have done it for uh, 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 for WTI spot prices. The dark line, okay, is the is the uh, crude oil price as the axis. It's axis here, but unfortunately we cannot see the the the, the, the numbers. But this other axis corresponds to the backward uh, SDF statistic, okay, which is this blue line. So this is a critical five percent critical value, and the idea is that. Uh, when we see that we have exceeded the critical 5% critical value that the BS ADF statistic exceeds the 5% critical value uh, line, if that, uh, if, 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 if that line is exceeded for a number of periods greater than seven, then we declare that there is mild explosivity. So we have mild explosivity during the global financial crisis in July 2008. We have mild explosivity during the crude oil price collapse in October, November, December uh, 2014. We have a spike here when the Fed uh, it decided to uh, rise interest rates uh, the, 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 for the fourth time in 2018. And we have a more important spike here um, it, due to the COVID, the collapse in the demand uh, in the energy sector due to the pandemic. So uh, this this is, this this um, this ev episode of mild explosivity is not long enough to justify okay the the existence of mild explosivity. We have four weeks of a, of. A, of mild explosivity, which obviously co 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 coincides with the with the with the time that the prices were at minimum. Okay, so this is around the twenty fourth of April. Um, but because uh, the, for, it, it doesn't uh, fulfill the minimum value condition, we cannot declare it as 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 as, as a period of mild explosivity. However, it is. Uh, it is uh, it is an, a sign of 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 concern. Obviously, 
we have all experienced such something similar in the 2014 and in the global financial crisis. So we don't know. We hope that they, we don't have, we don't see another spike or even another a period of mild exclusivity within the next coming months. Uh, just so this is how I report results graphically. Um, but here I have a summarized, okay, what the results show. So basically we see that for individual um, corporates, there are periods of mild exclusivity during the global financial crisis. Okay, so this is before, so the, the, the crude oil bubble uh, period of mild exclusivity is in July 2008, and this is just before, okay, where most energy corporates for which we have data, because for Royal Shell and Chevron we don't for that period, we see that there is mild exclusivity, okay, either in the first period of the crisis or the second so period or both. Then we see a slight period of mild exclusivity, less severe over the sovereign debt crisis. And we see evidence of mild exclusivity or in, in, in the, in the, during the 2014-2016 period. Okay, this X and B uh, indicates that uh, we don't we see a spike, but we don't uh, uh, that doesn't uh, fulfill the minimum bubble condition. And the star means that it's only significant at the 10% level. So um, for the energy indexes, we see we don't have data for that period, but we do see a mild exclusivity in 2014 and in 2015-16. I haven't been able to update that, but I do see that for the benchmark CDS energy indexes, um, uh, European, American, and Asian, we do see that during the COVID crisis, there has been uh, uh, some spikes, although they did in, 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 in credit risk uh, uh, reflected by CDS uh, spreads, although they don't, uh, they, they, they don't uh, satisfy the minimum power condition. Okay, so this is just to tell you how the backward recursive ADF statistic allows us to data stamp um, a period. So this is an example, for example, for Marathon Petroleum, we have a, a mild exclusivity from January 2008 to, uh, to April 2008. This is a, a, the credit risk in this sense is being a forward looking indicator because the, 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 the period of mild exclusivity in, in crude oil, it takes place in July 2008. But then there's another episode after the, 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 the crude oil price uh, period of mild exclusivity in 2018. And then there is the, another following the crude oil price collapse in 2014. Kinder Morgan exhibits a uh, mild exclusivity in 2011 and 2015 does an exhibit during the global financial crisis. Pioneer uh, exhibits during 2011, although not fulfilling the minimum order condition. And then at the end of 2018, uh, when the Fed rate raises the funds rate uh, for fourth consecutive time. And then Repsol, uh, exhibits a mild exclusivity all over global financial crisis, European sovereign debt, and um, and um, uh, during the uh, later episode of uh, two thousand and fourteen two thousand and sixteen episode. Um, this is. So now what I show you here is how the graph with results looks like for the European uh, CDS energy benchmark, okay? So basically the, the, the light blue is the B, BSADF, uh, recursive BSADF statistic, okay? Um, we see that the sample starts in 2012, but we see that there is an episode of a mild exclusivity in 2014 and another in 2015-16. We, there is a later episode at the end of 2018, and um, 
and then a, a big spike during the COVID crisis. Okay, this doesn't fulfill the the minimum viable condition, uh, but this uh, is this these two are very interesting because uh, this one this coincides exactly with the uh, a period of mild exclusivity uh, found for crude oil, Brent, and WTI prices. The American benchmark behaves similar to the European one. Perhaps there is a slightly less uh, uh, evidence of uh, uh, mild exclusivity in credit risk uh, uh, during the COVID crisis. But I have uh, I have reported the Asian the, the the behavior of the CDS portfolios for the for the Asian benchmark because I thought that um, it was important to show the, this result. We see again that there is a, a spike that does not satisfy the minimum viable condition. However, this is spike takes place uh, in January uh, as opposed to April. Okay, so um, we know that the COVID uh, uh, started uh, in December in 2000, December 2019, and 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 there were early signals uh, in January already in credit risk um, uh, showing that uh, the energy sector would be in trouble. This is just a table and uh, what uh, with, uh, with exact bubble dates, right? Um, um, so what is interesting, so for example, if you take the indexes, okay, you see that the bubble is declared in December 2014 to February 2015, and uh, yeah, these are yeah, yeah, and this is exactly this this uh, bubble episode exactly coincides with um, with the bubble episode uh, or my electricity episode uh, seen for crude oil prices. This is uh, here. I report uh, results for different. Um, different critical values, okay? So, um, in order to, to assess how the robustness of uh, our results uh, under the existence of heteroscedasticity, we apply the methodology introduced by Harvey 2016 um, by applying a bootstrap critical values, okay? That, that controls for the existence of heteroscedastic errors. So uh, these critical values obviously are, are higher than the standard ones during periods of high volatility, okay? Now, the, the periods of mild explosivity uh, in the European and American uh, benchmark remain even when we, when we control for, for, for hydroscedasticity. But that is not the case for the Asian benchmark. Um, this is just to show you also how um, this is the, 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 the test applied to the U.S. 10-year uh, uh, real yield. And uh, this is the, the, the light, the, the, the dark blue line shows the BSADF statistic. And we see that there is a spike that does not fulfill the minimum value condition but it takes place in the spring of 2013, just when the tapering process was announced. So, um, so basically the, that gives us an early signal of, of, of the deterioration that, 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 that suggests that there may be deterioration of financial conditions for energy corporates. Just, this is just for you to motivate the results that I have shown you about, shown you before, uh, the, regarding the existence of heteroscedasticity. Uh, these are just the different series for the uh, for the CDS uh, portfolio of uh, energy corporates in Europe. You see that there are periods of uh, heteroscedasticity or non-constant volatility in 2015, 2016, and in the, during the, 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 the COVID crisis. But uh, as the, the results are robust to the existence of the 
of, of bootstrap um, existence of heteroscelasticity through uh, uh, the application of bootstrap uh, critical values. So you see it in the graph, okay? Again, we see that although we have bootstrap critical values, okay, that control for the existence of heteroscelasticity, the statistic is still uh, uh, goes beyond the threshold given by threshold line given by, by the five percent critical value the covid related spike is still there and would is also goes beyond the five percent critical value under 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 bootstrap critical values but again we don't uh, the, the minimal condition is not fulfilled so this is just uh uh, this data, unfortunately, is not update, updated and is annual. But basically, this shows you what the capex, okay, the level of investment uh, uh, of energy corporates, different energy corporates. Um, th these are annual data, and this is the the crude oil brand price on on an annual basis to make the comparison easier. So the idea is that. Uh, while the capex ratios were very low during the just before the global financial crisis and during the global financial crisis there is an increase an, an important increase in the aftermath of the global financial crisis and this is mainly due to uh, so you have here the the, the 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 capex ratios for different the different companies bp exxon shell total reps or chevron so that shows that companies were enjoying the times of quantitative easing policies and using the exploiting the low rates to make new investments. However, after the crude oil price collapse, this and the uh, tapering announcement, this investment uh, collapses. Another interesting fact is uh, to observe the level of debt uh, in energy corporates. This is again the Brent crude oil price, okay, and this is the global financial crisis. So this is when the, the crude oil price collapses, and 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 here around here we must have the the, the, the Lehman's episode. So we see how the level of debt, as compared to the 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 EBITDA, earnings before interest and depreciation, okay, has increased dramatically after the global financial crisis okay so the idea what these figures confirm is that the 2014 uh, crude oil price collapse has been a, um, has been an important uh, trigger for the uh, increase in credit increase around that period because not only when the crude oil price collapses, the expected cash flow for energy corporates decreases, but also the value of the collateral decreases and that increases the, the, the cost uh, of financing their debt. So we offer, uh, from this point of view, a new dimension to this, uh, to this 2014 Team, uh, oil crisis and credit risk uh, crisis in energy corporates and um, which have not been addressed uh, in, in, in such uh, a detail um, a statistical detail in the anal in the in the literature okay so basically the idea is that uh, we show that we confirm that we 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 show that it, that that the credit risk for energy corporates uh, uh, is enhanced whenever there is a a, a crude oil price uh, regime sh uh, change. So cost it doesn't matter whether the 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 cost is the, from the demand side or from from supply side. Whenever the crude oil price uh, exhibits a, a regime shift in the direction of mild explosivity, this is reflected also in the credit risk in the, of energy corporates. And uh, we also uh, give some uh, important uh, guidelines on what is the effect of, of, of a tapering announcement, okay, on 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 the, on the balance sheet on the balance sheet deterioration, 
and that should be probably uh, important for the future, given that we are back to quantitative easing policies. It's important to take into account that what happens when, when these policies are, 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 are tapered. And um, we also uh, shed some light to the, to the last crisis caused by the COVID pandemic and show that uh, it has caused uh, um, a, 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 a period of mild exclusivity, although according to this technique, uh, it doesn't fulfill the minimum bubble condition, although uh, it has caused a, a credit risk also to, 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 to increase dramatically and therefore should be a factor of concern. Well, I think that's, uh, that's all I wanted to say. I hope you, you, you enjoyed it. I'm happy to take questions. Thank you very much, Isabel. Um, well, if any participant has questions, please raise uh, your hand. And let me start with one easy question about how long could be uh, my explosivity period? Um, weeks, months, maybe years. And if you know if there is um, correlation between, between this time and, and the size of the excess of the intrinsic value of the oil prices. And, well, and the second question is why the mild explosivity con uh, conditions are not fulfilled in the COVID pandemics and if, if really we don't want to that mild explosivity conditions fulfills uh, the COVID pandemic fulfills that uh, explosivity conditions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much um, um, for your question. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, actually, uh, the um, the, uh, you, it, the 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 length of the bubble can be actually longer than three four months. Okay. Um, in fact, if you use monthly data, it, uh, you may find, uh, it, I, haven't, I haven't used monthly data in my research, but there are previous studies such as Philips himself uh, did, uh, did uh, apply uh, his technology to monthly prices and he did find uh, periods of mild exclusivity that are longer than three months, say, okay. Uh, it is true that the, the, the minimum bubble condition, uh, the, 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 the log of T can be improved uh, and, 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 and that's one of the, 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 one, one of the issues that has to be uh, addressed in further research. Uh, Philips himself has done some work on it, um, but it, it can be calibrated because, for example, for the COVID pandemic, I, I, you know, I'm not sure whether I should worry, I mean, I, I, I should worry or not in the sense that, uh, okay, it doesn't, it doesn't fulfill the minimum of our condition, but uh, can I be 100% sure that that's, you know, that I, sh that this is not as, as big as the global financial crisis? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one because it's four weeks. Yeah. It's not seven. Uh, it, on one side, one could say that this is consistent with a V-shaped recovery, right? It has been a very uh, drastic fall in demand, but but that is the, the recovery. The recovery is going to be a, a V-shaped, but it may be a W. And if it is a W recovery, then the test does not declare a bubble because you may have like say three, four periods and then you're back to normal and then again, and that is not addressed in this particular technique as, 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 a, as, a, as a mild explosive, proper mild explosive period. But that's, you know, I mean, that's tricky. That's tricky. I mean, I wouldn't. I on one side, when I did the test, I say, "Wow, good. That's these are good news." You know, neither the crude oil price, neither neither the CDS are showing that this is mild explosivity as such. But on the other side, it's very, 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 uh, you know, uh, close to the. <laughs> 
to the declaration of, 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 of mild explosivity. And then with respect to, to bubbles being related or my periods of mild explosivity being, being related, uh, I totally, I, I believe that they, they are and that and you, can, you can actually, uh, there are a number of techniques being developed to, to test for that. Um, Philips himself developed in one of his earlier publications, the, the bubble migration methodology. And, uh, and that allows to, to, to test whether there is migration from bubbling one asset to another. The problem is that uh, that is developed only for the, for the case when there is one bubble in the sample for per asset, right? And, but he's now working in, in the co-explosivity concept. And I'm actually, I'm actually interested in, the, in developing, uh, in, in applying that work because I think it's very relevant to see, to test, formally test how, you know, bubbles are related in the context of the global financial crisis or in any of the crises that we have seen in the, over the previous two decades. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. Uh, someone else have a question here? Uh, Okay, I take um, order, please, Carlos, to give your question. Yes, uh, thank you, Mauricio. Yeah, I have a, well, a question, it's basically a curiosity. The oil, uh, the oil is traded in US dollars. Yes. But uh, I, I wonder what would happen if it were traded in Bitcoins. Would, would the market dynamic uh, change? A lot. Okay, we we have a, we have we did in our crude oil price paper. We do a test for robustness of the results uh, with respect to the SDR currency, the IMF. Uh, so basically, we weight the dollar price with respect to the the the, the value of a basket of currencies. Uh, to and we see that the the results are robust. Uh, now. <laughs> With respect to Bitcoin, uh, uh, that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one um, uh, because uh, Bitcoin tends to to rise during crisis periods, right? Uh, the, the the currency as such, like for example, it, it has been demonstrated that during the COVID pandemic, the the uh, the, the the Bitcoin itself. Uh, has acted like a like like gold, like a hedging uh, asset with hedging properties, and the, and that during the peak of the COVID, the, the Bitcoin was following the world or or or, or was co-moving with the with the number of deaths. So the fact that it spikes during crisis periods, I don't know. Uh, that would be interesting to see. That would be interesting. I haven't checked that. Um, but this, <laughs> I think that uh, that is a, a very interesting, uh, a very interesting question. Thank you, Sai. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now we have a question uh, from Stefan Storm. So uh, you are looking on bubbles in CDS prices, and CDS prices are essentially a measure for default probabilities and as a risk neutral measure. Now, yes. I think it's somehow an obvious question to ask, uh, is this a thing which has only to do with the risk neutral measure or is it something which has somehow a counterpart under the physical measure? Is there a spiking behavior of physical default probabilities? Speaking, has it something to do with uh, really underlying physical default probabilities, or is it only a phenomenon which is a pure pricing phenomenon and is not seen in the uh, underlying physical default probability data? Did you look into this? No, I haven't looked into that. I haven't looked into that. Um... But I haven't looked into that. That's a good point uh, to take into account for future research. My intuition is that it will also be uh, reflected in the physical measure. Um, but I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't tested. 
properly. I haven't done it. I haven't, I haven't looked into it properly. Might also be hard to get good data since usually physical probabilities are somehow estimated from ratings and I don't know if ratings adapt quickly enough so that one can get with good estimates. But I think theoretically it's an interesting question. Sure, sure. Well, that's part of the reason why I used uh, uh, why I use different measures, uh, not only the individual, uh, the individual uh, CDSs, which sometimes it, indeed they're not, you know, there's, the, the, the quotes are not liquid enough. I thought that taking a portfolio of CDSs would shed some light into, will, will, will grasp a more, uh, with greater accuracy, the, 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 the true uh, default risk, the physical. Um, default risk probability, but I, it's an interesting question. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll look into it. Thank you. Um, Johannes, you have a question. You have your microphone. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, thank you, Isabel, for, for this nice presentation. Um, I just wanted to carry on uh, uh, from uh, the very good point of Stefan there, that, that I believe that, yes, we have some new because, because it, it, it's linked to the, to the balance sheet. So, so, so we, we have, have the CDS pricing, the traditional probability, probability stock, stock, and then we have maybe the credit channel in the normal mathematical, mathematical uh, 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 demonstration to take that uh, uh, the credit channel will be as per 90, as per in a general framework that links effectively the uh, probability is the physical measure. If there is a balance sheet uh, reaction to a prior shock in the reasonable probability. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, someone else have a question, uh, a comment? Okay. Um, well, thank you for joining us and don't miss uh, the second part of this workshop.